That's it for now, but we'll see you next week for more stories about cars and the people who drive them. And that's it for now. We'll see you next time out as we continue to bring you more stories about cars, more stories about cars and the people who drive them. You know, I've been using that line to end Motoring TV episodes as way back as 1987 with Motoring 88. Seemed like a really good idea at the time, but I think today it might be a little misleading. And you know where I'm going with this. Nobody's buying cars anymore. SUVs are dominating the market. Car companies are making lots of money on them and nobody's complaining. So people like me. Oh yeah, I know, Graham drove that beautiful Audi RS3 the other day, but you know, that's not in my price range and a lot of other consumers too. So this week, I thought, let's keep it simple and affordable. Doesn't sound exciting, but please don't touch that dial. I gave Nissan Canada a call. Yes, the Micra is gone, but they brought out a new Sentra recently, and now they've got a new Nissan Versa. So this week, we're gonna check it out. So this week, we're checking out the Versa a small car that Nissan hopes will accomplish some big goals. The Versa has been out of the Canadian showroom for six years. It was first launched in 2006 and was actually Nissan's first entry into the small car market when small cars were very popular. As back then, customers are still looking for a bargain and the price like then is still attractive. You can get into a base model for around 16 k with a manual. Yes, the Nissan Micra was cheaper, but it's history now and you still get a lot more stuff in this Versa. Power windows and locks and air conditioning, which is not always a given in so-called economy economy cars. You even get lots of active safety features like front collision warning with pedestrian collision protection, as well as available front and rear auto braking, lane departure and blind spot monitoring. Now the Versa comes in three trims, S, SV, and SR, which is the one I am driving right now. In the S, it comes with a five-speed manual. Sounds good, but if you want the CVT, well, you've got to spend $1,500 on the option. The SV and this SR only come with a CVT or continuously variable transmission. I know what you're saying. It's not my first choice either, but they programmed in shifts into it, and they're also giving you a sport button to give you a few more revs, so I don't think it's a deal breaker. Now remember the old days with the Econobox, I mean it was bare bones, not anymore. This is about 20 grand for this SR, and look inside here, nice materials, these are zero gravity seats, nice stitching, and they are heated. The other thing is so many cars today have so much technology that you'll never use. I go to tech meetings when they launch a new vehicle. They're talking more about the infotainment system and staying connected, et cetera, et cetera, than they are about the actual mechanics of the vehicle. Well, in this Versa, you hop in, you adjust your mirrors, you look at your radio. Oh my goodness, we've got dials. It's easy to program. And then you've got AC, same thing, buttons and dials. And that's all you really need for a nice drive. Now, I know I'm not Jim Kenzie, but I really believe that gasoline and hybrids outperform electric vehicles in so many ways, unless you're just driving downtown. However, having said that, this Versa has been giving me some really good fuel economy numbers on the highway and in the city. So it's fuel efficient and it's practical. And as a guy who lives in downtown Toronto with a shared driveway with an electric vehicle, I've got to ask my neighbor if I can plug in my vehicle overnight. Just saying. huge trunk for such a small car the back seats fold down not level but they'll do the trick and the hinges too are exposed so it does negate some of that space but still lots of cargo space probably as much as many of the mid-sized sedans out there maybe my own pet peeve with the versa is it doesn't matter what trim you buy you can't get a heated steering wheel i know you're saying brad that is so un-canadian suck it up maybe it's an age thing but trust me in Canada, if you can get a heated steering wheel, you will never, ever go back again. It's definitely a vehicle that will be a lot of fun around town, but even on the highway. It's got a 1.6 liter engine, 122 horses, 114 pound-feet of torque. Now, those numbers aren't going to blow you away, but seriously, around town, that's all you need. When you get on the highway like I am now, it's quiet, it's comfortable, steering is nice, 
you can spend a lot of windshield time in this Versa. Basic, practical, and affordable. Doesn't exactly get you excited about your new car. However, I think that's the best way to describe the new Nissan Versa. And I think there are a lot of people out there that want that kind of vehicle that'll get them from A to B and back again with little stress, good fuel economy, comfortable ride, lots of cargo space, and the list goes on. So yes, I would put the Versa on your shopping list and maybe add the Kia Rio for a comparison. But you better hurry up because unless consumers get bored with SUVs, these little guys are gonna have a hard time finding a place to live in the future. That's it for now, we'll see you next time up as we continue to bring you more stories about cars and the people who drive them. If you consider Motoring TV has been on the air for 30 plus years, there's no doubt you've missed a few episodes. Well, there's a couple of ways you can catch up and make sure you don't miss anything. First, you can go to YouTube and look up just segments or complete shows. Also, if you wanna know what we're doing like today on a daily basis, just go to our Facebook page. And also, you can go to motoringtvshop.com, get some cool swag. Oh, there's also that Instagram thing.